that big glass. It's down yellow, and I yeah, they they're not. They look. It's more like an ink insect cloud class okay excellent and what is everyone doing there why are they all gathered there what does it look like is going on they're enjoying themselves they're talking and laughing and yeah meeting up each other and are there tables or places where you can sit or is yeah. every yeah, there are tables and they are sitting inside a cave. It's like uh, it's all. It's almost like a beehive. It's not. It's it's like a big beehive. I understand. And if you uh, look up, and is there what's in between where everyone is on the on the surface? What's up in the air? What's above it? Or, you know what I mean, in the area, in the uh, space? It's totally closed. It's, it's, it's uh, inside a big beehive, you could say. It's totally closed and it, the light is coming from outside. That's what's lighting up the whole place. So it's no light inside, it's the light is coming from outside. Is there, are, is, are you guys eating anything? Is anyone eating anything? No. I, I see some people eating, but I can't understand what they're eating. It doesn't look like a honey, does it? I know. I Not like it's... honey per se, but sort of like a... Could you get a little closer to someone who's eating? Just to get a better look. Okay. I asked that because I did a session with another person and they said that they had this substance. He said it sort of looks like honey, but they ate on, they ate it, it, it healed them, it did all kinds of things, so. It just it looks white. Ah, uh -huh. very it's kind good. of white. And as you look around, does there anyone recognize you? Someone's gonna come forward to communicate with you. Yeah, someone says hello. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah. And I want you to have them come over. We're going to head over and say hello back. Hello. And first I want you to ask, do they know what you were doing? And just put it that way first. And how you come to be there. Yes, it says you work here. Uh, your, your mission is here. Oh, very good. And I want you to take a long, slow, deep breath. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, feel the relaxation moving through your body. How'd that make you feel when he said that you work there? Oh, it wasn't a surprise. I enjoy it. I enjoy it here. So. And what is your job there? If you don't know, I'd like you to ask the person who, the one that approached you. They'll tell you. Oh, well, scientist. How oh, very good. And ask them, what are we working on right now? What are you working on? It says we're working on a camouflage cloaking, almost a cloaking technology. Oh, very good. And for whom? 
For the humans. Oh, for the humans. For the humans on the earth? He says there are many humans. So, Nukla, I want you to do something. It might sound a little strange. And I just want you to, I want like to see what the reaction is. Ask, first ask, what is their name? What is their name? Yeah. So who, uh, the one speaking to me, what his name is, what his name is. Nanda. Get something. It was Nanda. 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 Oh, with the T? Yeah, Nanta. Nanta, very good. And Nanta, and and now ask, how is Nanta related to you? He says we're friends working here, or more like colleagues. Colleagues, yes. We're working here. We are from far away from our families. Oh, very good. And now I want you to ask the question, the big question. I say, I just say, say, ask him, do you know what I am doing here with Hank? And just that much information first. He says, yes. Oh, very good. He says, he said you should be quiet. You should be careful, he says. Understood and careful about that I, Hank, should be careful? He says both should be careful. Understood. And could, could he elaborate, please? Quietly? He says you're safe. But, he, no, he, he doesn't have... He says you're safe, but... Be, be careful. Says. I, he doesn't say anything else. Be careful with the information that we share. Yeah, I, I think it's that what he's saying. Be careful with the information. With okay. What we are doing. So oh. it's, a, it's a huge mission. It's a big one. And we don't want to give any secrets away, is this correct? Yes, he says. That's why you're working on this. Am I working with this group as well with you? No, you're not here. Oh, very good. And the, um, how does he know what you how does he how is he familiar with what you're doing with me he senses it he's he's he knew something was off or something weird oh so that's why he approached yeah. you? Yes. Okay, very good. And say, I since you're here, since you're there, it, and you obviously are allowed to be there, is that correct? He says, I can't be here, but... You should be careful. Okay. Says. Well, we don't want to give up any information uh, at all that will compromise the mission. 
anything whatsoever. And since he is aware of how imperative and important the mission is, you had a few questions that you'd like to ask and could he possibly help you and to make sure, of course, don't give you anything that will compromise what you're doing. Oh, it's just... He says, I can't say much, he says you're safe, but no, he doesn't have much information about me, he doesn't, he doesn't know that much. Oh, understood. He just know about his mission and our mission together. And, and ask him, if, can he elaborate on the mission or not? And and we're not forcing it. We just, we, it, can he elaborate on any of it at all? Oh, he, he he's good. They're trying to come up so they can stop casualties, kind of protect people. Are they protect? Yeah, he, he says don't go outside. He says. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go watching. outside. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I don't understand. He says don't go outside or don't. I'll be careful. Oh, uh, very good. It doesn't want to say much. Okay, excellent. I want you to thank him very much just for coming over and uh, noticing you, noticing that you were a little out of place and ask him, is there any way that he could lead you to the council or someone that's in charge who would um, be able to communicate with you and help you He says, this is off planet, there is only, there is no council here, there is, this is almost like a military second base, military base close, not close, but they are far away, but they can't, there is no council here, it's just us, it's, it's a military, is there any mission. Okay. Is there anyone in, in charge there? Yes, there is. And he says, that's why I don't go outside, because he is outside. Oh, okay. Excellent. He says, be careful. Very, very good. Well, we definitely don't want to give up any information or compromise the mission in any way, shape, or form. And tell him I said, you know, can he hear me actually speaking to you? Yes, He's, he, he regularly hears you. Uh, he says yes. It's hard. Uh, reading your my thoughts since but he can rarely hear you he's yeah, no. you. not that clear but he hears someone is guiding me oh very good well ask them is there anything that he could actually show you or that's there that won't compromise anything or so, actually, are you ready to take leave of this place? Yes. Oh, very good. Yeah. And I'd like you to thank him. He thanks back. Oh, very good. And tell him you'll probably see him again later. Uh, and you're going to move once again back to the ship. Back to the ship in the clearing. And you're going to see yourself coming down the road and moving until you're standing in front of the ship. And you're going to be there in a count of five, 
four, three, halfway there, two, almost there. And when you arrive, you will be invisible. And one, are you there? Yes. yes. Is there anyone else around the ship? No. Oh, very good. You may now make yourself visible. Yeah. How was it to be to be able to uh, transport yourself from place to place like that? Pretty interesting, huh? Uh, it's it's kind of yeah. It's it's it's, it's it, you have to take in all the information where you are. And how are you now? Are, are you okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. Very good. Let's enter the ship once again. And we're going to lay down in the ship. And we're going to move again. And tell me once you're in the ship, and once you've sat in the, re the recliner chair and you've reclined back again, and the hatch is closed. I'm in the chair. Oh, good. And now the ship is going to rise straight up into the air, straight up into the air, and over the planet. And I want you to just look at the planet from high above, and just tell me anything else that's there. Are there any moons or any other planets, or is there a star that's close or anything? There's, There's a, big a big star. star. It's... This is a big, big star. This is the most third planet from the star. You are at the third planet from the star. Yes. I want you to look at the planet. Is the planet Earth? No, this is somewhere else. There's a. This is almost like a red planet. And just yes. uh, there's a black planet. It's totally black. It's like yeah. The only excellent. Four. Yeah. There are only four planets here. Oh, four planets going around this star. Yes. And which star is the black one the fourth planet or is it one closer to the star? The black planet is farthest. Farthest. It's big, but it's totally black. How do you feel when you look at that planet? It seems destroyed. Oh, really? Yes. Now, one thing that I found out that in all of these planetary systems like this, there is always some councils who reside over these areas uh, in space. And I would like for us to move to and have the ship take you. And I want you to just let the ship know and it knows what you're thinking, that you're moving to a council that resides over this entire area where you can get answers. And the ship is moving and you can feel it moving. And it's going to get there in the count of five, four, three, halfway there, two, almost there, and one. The ship has stopped. And now the ship is hovering down, 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 back to the surface. And it won't be anything sudden. Just like a leaf drifting gently out of a tree back down to the surface and as it arrives back down to the surface once again your chair sits up the recliner sits up and you may stand and tell me when you are standing i'm standing very nice now the hatch is going to open and uh, there's going to be a guide council I'm ready to walk out.
Oh, very good. And as you walk out, I want you to tell me uh, who is there to greet you and what does the place look like? It's a cold place. You say it's cold? Yeah, it's cold. Is there any ice or snow? Yeah, it's ice and snow everywhere. He, but he's just wearing a tunic. Oh. But it doesn't feel cold. It just looks cold. Oh, very good. And before you greet him, I want you to look at yourself and see what you look like this time. Always look I'm at your. Cov I'm covered in tunic. Oh, you have a tunic on as well. Yeah, a white tunic. And a he's white, tunic. white tunic. I always say start with your either your feet or your hands. I'm totally covered in white tunic. Almost like a mummy or something. Uh, yeah, I'm almost like a monk who's totally covered. Oh, very good. And I want, can you do, so your hands are actually covered as well. Do you see fingers? Or is it like a mitt? I take my hands out. I can see my fingers. How many? They're old. Five. Oh, very good. And are you, what color are you? I'm just curious. I'm orange. Oh, very nice. Interesting, huh? So yes. you're orange and you're older. And what about yeah. the being in front of you? What color can you see their skin? No, he's totally covered. He has his head down. But <laughs> it, it's like he's... He has... It's a, he has no form almost. It's like a being within the tunic. Ah, oh, very good. I want you to uh, introduce yourself. Tell them you are Umar and Nukla. And you're here to communicate. And you're very honored to be in his presence. He says, he says, thank, thank you. you. Very good. And I want you to ask this time right off, say, I'm bilocating, exact words that I'm using, from the planet Earth and with Hank. Do, does, he, does he understand what that means? Or does it understand what that means? He nods, he says, yes, he understands. Oh, very good. And tell him you were having dreams and visions and meeting and you're on a quest to get to know who you are. And so you had questions and one of the uh, planets that you landed on where you were Nukla, as a reptilian, um, you knew that you were part of an uh, army and uh, you just wanted to get some answers and you felt like it would be appropriate or Hank felt like it would be appropriate to speak to a council or someone in charge. So we don't want to make sure we compromise uh, any missions or overstep our bounds and we want to be most respectful. Could he answer any questions? You can answer some questions. And I just want you to tell them that the questions are literally just about you. Okay. 
He wanted to know, in that other form, what type of insectoid were you? Says you come from a warm planet. But I don't get any words. Ah, you came from a warm planet. Yeah. And were you chosen? Or did you volunteer to come to the earth as Umar? He said you chose to come here. And does he know how many times that you've been to the earth in a human form? He says you've been here a while. But so. Many lifetimes? Yes, he says many lifetimes you've been here, but many lifetimes. Many times, lifetimes. You have died and many times you've been in the team. And yeah, you've been here many times. You come back and forth. And what is the purpose for you incarnating and going back and forth on the planet Earth? What's the purpose? He says knowledge. Uh, knowledge. Very good. And this time you were, you, uh, you were, you learned that you were on a mission and um, that uh, squall, a rep, uh, reptilian, uh, had given you this information, squall. Does, is he, is he familiar with this mission? He says, you pick very difficult missions. You pick. You are always in the military, he says. You pick. You pick the hard one, he says, when you chose to come. And what about and your mission on the earth? Uh, could he elaborate on what makes this particular mission so hard? Even though you already know, but just to hear it from his perspective or from its perspective, please. He says this one was a bit easier this time. He says, but it's 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 the most momental time, he says. Even if it was one of your easiest it was one of our easiest missions here, but it's the most momental monumental monumental times to come here at this time. Uh, it's because been a long road. Ah, uh, because it's affecting the entire universe. Yes. And he says almost you wanted to lay back and see your work, he said, with all the others who are here. And enjoy what you accomplished. 
And that's what you will have an opportunity to do once this particular mission is complete. Yes, he says you will be beyond grateful for what you have done. He says he can't describe or show you how happy everyone else is. From, no word. Uh, from so the heavens, from, from all the species and all the heavens, all the angels. He says, every one of you on earth should be happy. You're all chosen to come now. And many of you have a second chance. Excellent. So we are basically accomplishing our mission then. Yes, we are accomplishing it, and we are doing great, but we need to stay focused, but it's winning, we're winning. It says it's a matter of time. Oh, very good. And this particular mission that we're on with the Earth, without... Could he actually... Could he could you please tell us what is this mission? We know, but we'd like to hear it from a via a fresh perspective. And I know it's he it says it's a relaunch, reprogramming, re uh, It's a up almost like update of systems, update. Because the old system is not working. We are beyond. We have grown beyond the old system. We have to go to the new one. And would the old system be uh, duality and polarity and opposition? The old? Yes. He says it's. We have to. We have to upgrade, we have to go into higher consciousness. So, in our higher consciousness, will we then unify? He says, yes, you will unify. Oh, very good. And is uh, the, mon the monumental, you say it's not, not as hard, but it is uh, enduring for sure. The uh, so we will be moving from our 3D, third dimensional uh, physical bodies to uh, what, a fifth dimensional crystalline body, a more energetic body? Is that, would that be accurate? He says you want to move to a crystalline. You want to move to a crystalline body. But, uh, We will move to a kit line body, but it's not for all, he says. He says some wish to still be here on the old planet, and many want to leave to the new planet. Because people have not, many haven't reset their karma or they haven't I haven't had the experience. <coughs> they haven't finished yeah. what they uh, set out uh, to accomplish. Yes, they haven't finished. But so many don't want to leave the old planet, and many want to go into the new planet. So, does do the ones that have to that are ready to move forward? Do they have to wait until the others are ready, or will? 
they be able to shift into this higher dimensional expansion of consciousness while the others remain. They want to move us all, but it's not going to work. I have to move apart, apart, and slowly. I think rest will follow. When some start, when it starts moving, the rest will follow. I think it's going to be like a chain reaction. Ah, oh, very good. And how will that physically manifest itself on the planet? Could he share that, please? And I, when I mean how will it physically manifest, as those who raise their vibration and are shifting into the higher vibration, and you say those behind will be either enamored or like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then they will decide that they would like to shift as well. What will be the difference and how the ones who are moving into that compared to the ones who will then be motivated afterwards? What will be the difference that will, will make the motivation? They'll be connected by mind. And Help, we're, gonna, we're gonna help each other, we're gonna feed each other, we're gonna find a place for everyone, and others will see, others want to be part of it, because it's gonna be love. Understood, excellent. And what role will Omar play in this? shift what's his mission because he's not in the military here and now although other aspects of, of him are he says he will just help along he will move but you don't he, he's not sure At, He's not sure, he says it's simple. We don't have to play a big part now. He says. Understood. Just go with the flow, he says. So with Omar being who he is and deciding to volunteering to come here, does he hold a high vibrational signature that just automatically uh, helps those around him? Yes, he says you're going to be believable. You're going to, you need to speak and talk to people. He says, and uh, he says, I see you started it, uh, but you need to be more spoken and don't be shy. Oh, very good. I want you to speak a little louder and a little. I can hear you clearly. Very good. And so what about what you're doing right now with Hank? Is this uh, going to help with what your mission? He says, you know what you're going to have to do. You just need convincing. Because you doubt yourself. And yes, you, you were meant to meet Hank in case. It's no, yes, loud. it's loud. You were, yes, he says you were meant to meet, meet Hank if you doubted yourself and didn't believe in yourself. But you have to speak up, he says. And don't be afraid. Ah, oh, very good. So, um, us coming together was a just in case you don't. And 
And so you had it and here we are and now you are. And this is a really good thing to help motivate you. Yes, he says you, you have everything you need, but you must meditate often, more often. Find your quiet place and try to connect. You're distracted by the 3D world. He says, he says you are tired. That's why. But mm -hmm. you are falling into the right path again. But he says you don't need much effort in this lifetime. Because everything is kind of going on auto wheel. It's like spinning on and it can't be stopped. You can't jump out now. Oh, very good. Resistance is futile is yes. the uh, term that I like to use. Yes. Everyone is on it, he says. And you can't jump off it. There is no going back. Perfect. You say it's hard for them to see timelines, though, with the way the time is on the Earth. Is that correct? Except for the yes. timeline that it's inevitable. Yes. Excellent. You had, there was a time where you were, um, I, I, you had a desire to see extraterrestrials. And you gave yourself a suggestion that you wanted to see and you did it several times and then you were on the train on the rail and yes. there sat before you a gentleman in the suit and when you looked at him you can see the slits in his eyes and he looked had a reptilian look and having been seen your reptilian self in the session that we did earlier in the trial um, was that particular person in that meeting, if they happen to know, was he an extraterrestrial who was in the form of a human and I could just see it? Or was he just like you? He's had an incarnation as a reptilian and you could just see that within him. What was that, please? He um, was uh, in disguise. He was he was camouflaged. He was a reptilian camouflaged as a human. Is that but sort of he, he and, was yeah. Don't hear you. He stopped? Okay. So yeah. he so was he connected to you? Was he a was he a guardian, or it just happened to be something that you just happened to experience? Was it random? It was very random. It was. He was shocked. He was very shocked. The Who? Person, the reptilian. He was very shocked. That you recognized him that you saw him, that you saw his life. And but he, he tried to read. He was shocked. And he, but he understood uh, that people are waking up. Are there many reptilians in disguise here? And obviously he was a benevolent or a nice. He wasn't trying to harm anyone. Are there many here? He was nice. He was just trying to do a living. He was separated from his own. But he's nice. They are 
Many have left. Many, many have left. But I was. Yeah. I was told that they had been deported off the planet for uh, for various reasons. Man, yes, many, many have left. Many, many bad are hiding, but many, many good have left. Just in case. But just in, just in case of. They are afraid. In case of being revealed. Understood. Understood. And did the reptilian who was in disguise, did he recognize the reptilian genetics within you, Omar? Ask him. No, I didn't. Okay. He just knows that humans are waking up and he was like, whoa, he saw me. Yes, he got afraid, so he, he was kind of confused. He wanted to avoid you. Understood. And the camouflage technology that he was engaging in, uh, so he has another form beyond just the physical form that we could see. Is that a holographic uh, form that he had taken? Was it holographic? It's, mm, it's holographic and it's mostly pure mind. Only. It's all about what you see. Ah, so he pro projecting into the minds of anyone who looked upon him to see a normal everyday human. Is that correct? Yes, it's. It's more of a mind game. And with that type of power or that type of ability, he didn't have to think about it all the time. It was just what pretty much like the energy that he was putting off his body. And that's how he registered. Yeah, it's normal. like a, it's like a brainwave almost. You can't stop it unless you choose to stop it. Oh, very good. And so what about you were just as nu as Nukla before you arrived here to have a conversation with him, with this uh, being, you were they were working on camouflage technology. Is that type of technology is that the same type of technology that they use that they're developing on that planet you were just on? It was that was for more for for hiding from the hiding the colonies, hiding the people from the bad mostly. So, so of that particular planet that they were on, that third yes. planet from the star. Yes, it, it was more like hiding themselves so they can be found. So, more of defensive technology. And that particular type of species, that nucla, when you were nucla, is, was that more of an insectoid or was it a reptilian or a combo? Looks more like insect insectoid. I'd like you to ask to make sure you're still asking the the uh, the being. What does he say? In the tunic. Can I ask him? Oh, very good. It says they are. I get it. It's insectoid. Oh, very it good. 
So earlier when you were speaking with Squall, you were in that military group, and that was Reptilian? Yes. And then when you were speaking to Nanta, that was uh, Insect. in Insectoid? Yes. And these are a other aspects of your multidimensional self, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. But? He says almost soul extensions, he says. Oh, very good. Very good. So a, a, a soul extension, ex, extension would be the same thing as another aspect of who you are. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anything that this being would like to share with you? First of all, I know we've asked a lot of questions and it may sound rude and I apologize, but does the entity have a name that it could share? He says he has no name. Oh, very good. And in your meditation, would it be possible while you're meditating to have more uh, communication with them? Is it possible? Would he welcome or honor it? He says, yes. He says, it's tube of light, he says. Tube of light. And what does tube of light stand for, please? I mean, just to help you understand better. It says, imagine a tube of light on you. Oh, very good. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very, very much for that. And, the, and is there a particular reason why this entity has come forward? What is this entity's connection with you? Could you ask him, please? Yes, he has no connection. He just come, came to help. Well, we are very, very grateful, extremely grateful for the help and for the information that uh, it has shared with Umar and Hank today. And uh, we feel very honored and blessed. And uh, we're very, very grateful. Is there anything else that it would like to share with the planet Earth and with you and with Hank at this moment that would help us and be in our best interest? Starting with the Earth first. It's just... Oh, wow. It says... You are on the edge of, it's not much to say because you're on the edge of just taking over to greatness. So there, there, there's, there's nothing, you, you, you can just relax, he says. Just be who you, be who you are. And keep doing what you are because it's going on the right path. You don't need you need you don't need to be worried. Excellent. Yes. And is there anything in particular that they would like to share with you? I think personal. Even if it's just something motivating. Oh, oh he's just say, oh, be op open your mouth. He says, talk. Don't be shy. And 
they're more like people are more like you and than what you believe. But no, not anything particularly. Very good. Very, very good. So once again, we're very grateful for the opportunity to come together like this and to communicate uh, and receive answers. And um, I'd like you now to drift and float away from the scene. And as you drift and float away from the scene, once again, you've landed back on the ground and right behind you is the ship. And I want you to tell me when you can see the ship. I see the ship. Oh, very good. And I want you to go ahead and uh, enter onto the ship. And then find your place where you can have a seat. Yes. On the seat. Now, on the ship, there is a dial. As you sit there, a little screen will come up. And this is a number screen. It'll just tell you whatever number to the answer of any of your questions, because you have a few numbers questions. Has the screen come up? Yes. Alrighty. And here's your first question you want to present to the screen. How many times have you been a female on the planet Earth, have you manifest as a plain female? What number does it come up? It says four. Ah, oh, very good. And how many is a male? Three. What's the screen? I'm sorry? Three. Including the night the life of Zumar? Yes. Oh, very good. And had you, uh, how many times have you been uh, anything aquatic? And, um, Zero? Yes. Oh, very good. And how many times have you had interactions with Hank in a physical life? Seven. So in all seven of your lives, you and I have come together? I see seven. Oh, okay. Very good. And is that here on the planet Earth? Oh, it's just numbers. It's just numbers. I'm so sorry. Very good. Have you ever been anything on the planet Earth besides a human? Yes. Now there should be another screen and I want you to, and that's on the other side. What were you? What I was like when I was not a human. What were, 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 you, were, you, what were you something? What were you? The other screen will just write the name of whatever it is that you were. Were you in it? Andromeda. Andromeda. Ah, Andromeda. So when you came here, you did, so did you come here in a ship to explore the planet or what were you doing here? Yes, helping. Oh, very, very good. Very good. So how big are these screens? It's almost like a notepad. Perfect.